I must tell you about this study because uh, for me, it's kind of, I call it my, my singularity experiment. So it, it's basically the shock, the shock of my career. I've been in the business for 20 years. And last year, uh, at the end of last year, we ran an experiment which, um, uh, well, it, we didn't run it last year, we ran it the year before, but in, in any case, the, the result became published last year. And this is probably the most fascinating effect of phenomenon I've ever seen. And it, it captures a lot about what I'm interested in, but it, it does relate to linguistic creativity. So uh, bear with me, it is not simple. So first I need to tell you that in Chinese, so we're now moving to Chinese, uh, why not? Yeah. There are, of course, like in any language, there are different ways to refer to time. And one classic expression in, in Chinese is how you say the day after tomorrow. The day after tomorrow in English is that complex expression, the day after tomorrow. In Chinese, it's hu tian. Now, hu tian doesn't tell you what it means, but if you translate hu tian literally, that is if you take each character, hu and tian, and you translate into English, I hope it will surprise you that the translation is back day. So as a matter of fact, uh, the day after tomorrow, it sounds like intuitively it is in the front space because it's in the future. And I need to say here, I need to, to give you this little uh, disclaimer or warning here that in Chinese, like in many other Indo-European languages, the future is in front and the past is in the back. So it's very weird to call back day a day that is the day after tomorrow because it should be in the front. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, the reason why this is the case, which is not the topic of the current experiment, uh, is historic. It's about language evolution. So there are some pretty good essays that have been done on this from a linguistics point of view, which claim that uh, basically, if you go back in, in history, the reference for time, the spatial reference for time was different. Now we have an egocentric reference for time. So we evolve in time. What's in our back is what we've seen already. It's the past. What's in front is what we are going to see is the future. So if you're egocentric in your reference system, of course, you're going to see what's in front. Now, if you are in a world-centric view, which is the old times, and it also exists in other languages like Aymara in uh, Colombia and Brazil, you have a world-centric view of, of time passing. And that means that the world is moving around you and you are not moving. Now, if that happens, what you see in front of you is what has happened already. Can you see the difference of perspective? And so what's in front of you is what you know you can see, therefore it's the past. And what's in front of you is what you can't see yet, it's the future. So the reason probably why back day was inherited somehow through language is because at some point in Chinese, there was a world-centered reference point for time representation in space. I close the parenthesis here. This is the experiment that we did. We ask participants, Mandarin Chinese, English bilinguals, to sit in the chair and to hear, to listen to words that were presented from the front space or the back space through loudspeakers. And the auditory system in humans is pretty good at this. So if you present a sound coming from the front, they can tell it comes from the front because of the orientation of your ears and the way you process sound, you can tell it comes from the front and the back. And we can test that independently, which we did. We made sure that in 80 or percent or more of the cases, participants could tell whether the sound came from the front or the back. And what we did was we presented them with days of the week, okay? So imagine, for the sake of the argument, that the experiment was on a Wednesday, yeah? And we present them with the sound coming from the front Thursday, okay? Now, if they hear Thursday coming from the front or the back, or if they hear Tuesday, which is the day before, yesterday, from the front or the back, they have to press one. So they have to press one because the distance between today, which is Wednesday, and what they hear is one day, okay? Now, if these two days, if it's, for example, Friday or Monday, irrespective of whether it was the past or the future, and irrespective of whether it came from the front or the back, you have to press the two button, okay? So one for one day interval, two for two day interval. That's all. Needless to say that participants found this incredibly easy and that they had almost a perfect run. Like it was over 98% correct. They couldn't possibly get it wrong. Now, we measured their brainwave to this. And lo and behold, 
what we found was that when they heard the day after tomorrow, which is Friday on a Wednesday, coming from the front, their brain did not like it. And we can tell that he didn't like it because it was experiencing a superior processing cost, which we can measure, we can quantify it in the brainwave, exactly where we should find it on the, on the scalp, exactly in the right time window, which is in milliseconds and thousands of seconds, and exactly in the direction where we predicted. It happened whenever they encountered the day after tomorrow, the, for example, Friday on the Wednesday, coming from the front relative to coming from the back, because the back was okay, even though it's completely opposite to the intuition, which is that Friday is in front because it's the future. But when it was coming from the back on the auditory track, it was okay for the brain, but when it's coming from the front, it was not okay. And the beautiful thing about this, this is where it's, it's incredible data, is that if you change now to Monday, which is the day before yesterday, you get the exact reversal of that effect. Now, the day before yesterday, Monday, is easier to process when it comes from the front, even though it's in the past, than when it comes from the back. Believe it or not, but the incredible thing is that the day before yesterday in Chinese, it is Chan Tian, I can't pronounce this very well, and it happens to mean front day. In other words, we had a perfect reversal of that thing, depending on whether we were presenting it from the front or the back, directly linking it to the label the label of the word, of the concept in Chinese. Now, consider that for a second. What we have found is that the Chinese mind, because it has a word that means directly back day in the language, even though the concept is that of the day after tomorrow, and it's in the future, and it's the front space in terms of convention, the brain automatically retrieved the translation because it was presented in English, automatically retrieved the translation in Chinese unconsciously, noticed that it was in the wrong orientation sometimes, and suffered the cost in real time. That's thought, guys. That is thinking. That is unconscious thought evaluation of a concept. And it did this entirely outside the participant's knowledge. They have no idea what we're testing. They don't know but we can tell for sure because we predicted these effects. In other words, language constrains thoughts in real time and at an incredible speed. It's, it's exactly, exactly where we would and when we would expect it to happen. That's spectacular.